share my screen you should see it by now do you see it yes it looks good thank you okay so many thanks for this invitation it's a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to talk about name entity processing on historical documents so with this presentation i will very briefly talk about the challenges of name entity on historical uh, documents and uh, mainly focus on the shared task that we have organized last year with my colleague um, uh, Simon Clematide, Matteo Romanello, and Alex Flukiger, also in the context of uh, the Impresso Media Monitoring of the Past project. So a lot has been said already about name entity processing, and uh, I just would like to briefly come back on why do we need uh, name entity processing on historical documents? Why do we do this? Well, you are all aware that we have, uh, from the point of view of NLP, quite some new data at hand with the emergence of large-scale archive of digitized contents. Uh, this I do not present to you. And uh, on the other hand, there is a uh, new needs with many scholars who need to retrieve documents from these digitized collections and also uh, explore their contents. And this, uh, this uh, exploration at the core, uh, an entity can be very crucial as it has been already documented for, for information retrieval for mainstream contemporary document, named entities are, are, are a referential anchor, which can really help uh, retrieving document and retrieving information. And this is the same for historical document. Obviously, in this uh, task, natural language processing can help. However, applying in natural language processing tools, which have been mainly developed for English text and a contemporary document is quite, um, quite difficult to apply them uh, as it is on historical text, and we face many challenges, especially for named entities, um, as follows. So one of the first challenge is the variety space. Uh, we are facing documents of different type, uh, with different time periods, and naturally with very uh, different domains, as it has been shown just in the previous um, the previous presentation. And this variety space is kind of larger to what we are used in NLP. It's not that there is not such a variety in a contemporary document, but NLP by legacy is kind of focusing on, on more restricted domains. The second challenge is obviously um, as well the noisy input with uh, documents which are the text is acquired via uh, handwritten text recognition or optical character recognition, which are not perfect. And this is posing really problem for, for tools. A third challenge relates to the dynamics of language with, for example, spelling variations uh, across language and across time. They are uh, evolving quite a lot. And uh, as well, naming conventions, for example, for person names, which are changing through time. And also the phenomena of entity drift with uh, entities which appear through times and slowly fade out. And uh, this phenomena is also challenging uh, system of today on contemporary text, but for historical setting is kind of uh, a, um, a stronger phenomenon. And all these three challenges are kind of compounded by the lack of resource being the lack of label data for training and evaluation purposes, the lack of unlabeled data for training uh, language models, for example, and also the lack of knowledge base or perhaps their incompleteness with respect to historical entities. Uh, and therefore, we are lacking information to perform, for example, entity linking. So this challenge can be somehow sum up as a, if we want to, to summarize, we can cast this problem as a domain and time adaptation of named entity uh, on historical processing, on historical documents, sorry. And in this context, we wanted to assess the performance of today's system on historical document, and we organized an evaluation campaign, which we named HYPE, with the objective to strengthen the robustness of existing approach on such difficult multilingual noisy documents, uh, which are historical. We also wanted to enable the performance comparison because so far it's very difficult to compare system performance because there is not a benchmark that I said, which are shared around such as for contemporary data, Cornell, Ontonot, which have been presented in the introduction. And on the long run, we wanted also to foster efficient semantic indexing of digitized cultural heritage collection. 
So what is Hive? Hive belongs to a tradition of evaluation campaign in NLP, which are kind of driver of progress in, in, in this field. And uh, Hive stands for identifying historical people, places, and other entities, and it focuses on uh, identity processing in historical uh, newspaper. It is one of the first shared tasks on historical document. And for this first edition, we were lucky enough to have 13 participating teams, which is, uh, which is not that bad for first edition. So we consider two tasks. The first one, identity recognition and classification with two settings, one kind of easy, the other one more difficult. The easy one is a course type where we consider only a few types of uh, an entity, as you can see here. And the second one is an ERC fine grained with 12 class of name entities. In this setting, we also ask um, system to recognize entity component. That is to say the part which compose an entity such as first name, last name, function, title. We also have system to be able to deal with metonymy phenomena and also to recognize nested entities. So let's take an example. Here you can see the annotation of a French text from a historical newspaper. On the first line, you can see that there is an entity annotated as Morocco, but the string is, doesn't look like Morocco. So this is the kind of noise that we, we confronted the system with. On the line three and four, there is a notation of a person, Monsieur Pichon, Ministre des Affaires étrangères, and all this string has been annotated as a person name with a different component, the title, the, the name, and the function. So that's for the first task. And the second task, we consider entity linking, where we ask system to link entity mentions towards Wikidata QID or nil in case the entity is not present in the database. Again, there were two settings, kind of easy and difficult. I don't detail this. I just want to give you the same example where here, Mr. Pichon has been linked to the QID in Wikidata uh, of Stéphane Pichon, a French politician. There is more information about, um, about this setting in the participation guidelines. As I said before, for historical documents, there is not really a benchmark existing. So we had to compose our corpus. And we, for this, we selected historical newspapers coming from uh, digitized archive in Luxembourg, Switzerland, and the US. And we consider a quite a large time span with more than 200 years for documents in French, German, and English. Naturally, we did a random sampling to compose our, our, our corpus, but we additionally did a triage in order to keep only journalistic content. That is to say that we wanted to filter out feuilleton, crossword, table, things like this, but also articles which were extremely noisy to the point that even a human could not read it. And we choose not to provide different version of um, OCR quality in order to really uh, um, put the system in front of real life setting where they have to face with different OCR quality varying according to the collection, to the newspaper, to the time, etc. Um, once we have selected the corpus, we had to we carried out an annotation campaign with different people. Very briefly here, uh, we use the inception platform. We uh, define guidelines to annotate uh, this corpus. And here I would like to uh, perhaps emphasize the difficulties that we, un we encountered during this annotation phase. Uh, regarding first name entity recognition and classification, it was sometimes difficult to establish the boundaries of name entity mentioned in the case of long phrases such as Monsieur Pertois, Dandouwa, Diane Ducor, a ministre, etc. It's not always easy to really specify the boundaries. So it's a bit of a moving target. Also, it was not easy to consider multiple language, French, uh, German, and English. Here, the case of compound German is not always easy to, to handle. And obviously there is a problem of the definition of name entity, which is kind of well-known problem, which have a bit of a gray zone between proper name and common nouns. And sometimes in the case of organization, for example, uh, it's difficult to decide whether it's an entity or not, like here, Commission Imperial or Die Französische Regierung. There is also the problem of a definition of an entity at a time, of which type it is. If we are in the 19th century, is Savoie or Moldavia a region or country? And obviously, metonymy is not always easy to have a, a full agreement between annotators. That was for our recognition. If we consider linking, one can really say that one requires historical knowledge to link entity of historical uh, document towards Wikidata, but um, it's not on enough. One can also need a very accurate Sherlock Holmes skills because the persons and entities which are mentioned in historical document are not VIP, but people who are known at that period. And even for historians, it's, it can be really lay, layman people. So uh, it's really a, a kind of a, a real investigation work to know 
who is who, and that's not easy. Another difficulty is um, the inequal representation of uh, entity historical status so in the knowledge base, in our case, Wikidata. Let's take this example of Germany, who has eight QIDs for the different time period of the period we consider uh, 19th, 20th century, whereas for other uh, countries, there was only one QID. So this introduced obviously inconsistency with the data with what that we try to, to deal with. Um, for the initial annotation for the evaluation campaign, you need to quite some assets. So I really briefly uh, uh, list them here. We obviously released the corpus. We uh, provided ad additional auxiliary resource um, embeddings, a scorer, an evaluation toolkit, which I just present here. And I jump directly on uh, telling you the main features of the participating system. So we had 13 systems, which submitted a total of 75 runs for this evaluation campaign and all but two teams applied neural approach for NES. So it does, it's not really a surprise. And most of them work with contextualized embedding, in particular with BERT embedding. It can be noted that for NESC, many teams experimented with different input embedding, uh, often testing characters, sub world, world level representation, trained either on contemporary or historical material, and often combining the classical type level embeddings uh, with contextual embeddings. Several teams, or teams sorry, also try to improve um, the, the input, the line-based newspaper input format that we provided from directly from the archive in order to reconstruct linguistically motivated sentence uh, and to deal with hyphenated words. And this processing really turned out to be very helpful. Here's an overview of the result for NESC. I do not present things in, in details, but really uh, the main point is that really, again, neural system with strong uh, embedding resource prevail, and uh, they really beat by far the symbolic CRF of pattern matching uh, based approach um, baseline. Not surprisingly, we observe that the amount of available training data and uh, development data correlates with the system performance, and we also notice that the performance uh, difference between neural system uh, that rely on BLSTM or BERT, in this case, BERT is really performing generally better. At the level of uh, cores versus fine grain, uh, we observe uh, quite good performances for NESC cores, uh, despite a great diversity of results. But the top results are kind of better of, uh, than what we expected. And there are six teams which had a F score, a fuzzy F score higher than 0.8, which is kind of suggesting good prospect for entity extraction system on historical text when trained with appropriate and sufficient data. For fine grain, uh, obviously having to deal with 12 classes is more difficult and the, the, the results are, are less good. And finally, the recognition of entity components show kind of reasonable performance, which kind of suggests that we could do some biography reconstruction from historical text. As two, two I would like before concluding, two more observations. We try to um, assess the impact of the article's publication date on system performance. So we analyze the variation of F1 score as a function of time. And our initial hypothesis is what the older the article, the more difficult it will be to extract and link the mention in context. But in general, we observe that there is not such a strong correlation between the article's publication date and F1 score. And as a second observation, uh, we try to evaluate the impact of OCR norms and to assess uh, uh, how this impact the, the performance for both NESC and entity leaking. And we evaluated the system performance on various noise level. Here we define the noise as a length normalized Leverstein distance between the surface form of the mention and its a corrected manual transcription. And we can play with different uh, distance. For both NERC and linking, we observe that uh, there is really strong differences between the performance for noisy versus non-noisy mention. And we also observe that as little noise as 0.1 Levenstein distance really severely hurt the system capability to predict an entity, and it can cut the performance by half. And finally, we observe that the, the greatest variation between the 13 system happened at the medium noise level, which suggests that the, the most robust system kind of get their competitive advantage when they are dealing with this kind of medium noise uh, level. As a conclusion, so this high uh, evaluation task uh, gave us the opportunity to test the robustness of uh, NESC and linking approach against challenging historical multilingual noisy material. And that we have gained a bit uh, new insight in domain and language adaptation. With regard to NESC, 
um, results show that it is possible to design systems which are able to deal with historical uh, material and the kind of their performance compete with those obtained on contemporary text for some system. However, entity linking as well as nest identity and entity components remain quite challenging and um, uh, performance are affected by OCR noise, which is not a surprise, but more surprisingly, they are not affected by document publication dates. So overall, with this shared task, uh, we hope to have contributed to advance the state of the art in semantic indexing of historical newspaper and more general uh, of historical material. Um, you can have more information if you wish in the hype proceeding and as well in the participant, participant video, which are published and uh, or extended overview paper. As future direction and perhaps opportunities of collaboration within this group, I would like to uh, mention here that we are organizing a second edition of this shared task. And uh, I'm happy to discuss if you are interested or if you have uh, data. Uh, we have our guidelines which are published and the data and the participation setting. So we are really happy to collaborate and discuss about this if you wish and uh, to collaborate further around models and uh, data. I shared some references for, for you in case I will share the slides and I thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so much. That was that was great. We've had three wonderful presentations, very substantial and a lead off from Javier which I think grounded us all. Thank you all so much. Um, there are many um, questions for all three speakers in the document. I suggest we continue the conversation there as well as in Slack and email. And if all of our speakers wouldn't mind linking to their presentations, that would be great. Uh, thank you so much for this and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next one.